Welcome to video 14 in a series of introductory videos for SolidCAM. This video's topic is HSM. The HSM toolpath is a 3D recognition toolpath that mainly could be used for finishing. It does have some semi-finishing capability, but mostly finishing is the function here because what you're doing is you're choosing one of the technologies from HSM and applying it to the overall solid to finish the solid. And that is in comparison to the uh, HSS toolpath, the toolpath we saw in videos 11 and 12. Uh, and this toolpath being a recognition toolpath, it allows us to do the entire solid in one finishing toolpath. You can limit the travel of the toolpath using the constraint boundary, uh, but mainly you're doing it, uh, you're choosing one technology to apply to a, an area of the solid rather than surfaces like we saw in videos 11 and 12. So let's take a look at the various technologies from HSM. I'm just going to open up the first one here. And in HSM, it has the same functionality of the HSR toolpath we saw in video 13, where you choose your geometry. In this case, the geometry is just the target, so we don't need to change that. <clears throat> you choose your tool. In this case, I'm using a quarter inch ball mill, a bull mill for this toolpath. Constraint boundaries, similar to what we saw in videos 9, 10, and 13, you choose a sketch or a edge of your solid to represent the area that you want to machine. In this case, I'm doing the entire part, so I'm letting it choose it automatically for me, and that is just that green rectangle there, the entire part. Once you choose your constraint boundary, you can choose the boundary tool relation, which just basically means how far the tool can travel outside that area. We have internal, external, censored, and tangent. Uh, the explanations of those will be found in videos 10. And then the passes is just the wall offset, floor offset. So as I mentioned, there are some semi-finishing options here, mainly just telling it that you're leaving some material on the walls and the floor. But by setting it to zero, I'm basically going to finish the entire part. Depending on your technology, you'll have different options here. In this case, we're doing the horizontal toolpath, which focuses only on the flat areas. So I only have a offset. I don't have a step down. And then Z top, Z bottom, that is just the levels in the Z direction between which we want to recognize the target. So as a target recognition toolpath, I'm telling it to do everything it finds of the target, but between those two Z levels. So again, in HSM, those are the common uh, sections. But what really differenti differentiates HSM is the technologies. And there's a whole list here. We're going to go through each one. So this one right here is horizontal, which means of the solid, it analyzes it and only does the horizontal areas, the completely flat surfaces on this part. Next is constant Z. So any curved or tapered or vertical edge it finds of this part. You can see that it doesn't actually travel past this line because, again, the constraint, ba uh, constraint area, constraint boundary, it limits the travel of the tool to just the center of the tool. So it's stopping right there on the center. So you can see it does everything other than the horizontal faces or even the top of this curve here because the step down I gave it, pretty much uh, it's, this is the height between the top of that curve and that first line um, falls in between that, uh, that step. So it, it's almost going horizontal at that point, so it's ignoring it there. Next is linear. So the linear machining toolpath from HSM does the entire part in whatever direction I tell it. So you can see that it's gone and done a linear toolpath in the Y direction. Similar to what we saw in, um, in videos 11 for the linear toolpath, we just give it a direction we want it to go in. So if I told it to do um, the X direction, I would basically leave the angle at zero. So we go to passes. To find angle by, I have it set to 90, which is the, the Y axis. But this is just an angle off of the X positive direction. And I'm telling it to do that for the entire part. Next is the radial toolpath. And here I'm using a constraint boundary to limit the travel to just this dish area. Radial, you give it a minimum and a maximum radius. You give it a step over. So here's the minimum and maximum radius. I chose a center of that geometry as the center of the part. The angle range, so basically zero from 360. And I'm giving it a step over 
That is the step over in between each one of these spokes. So radial is essentially just a star pattern there. If I do spiral, that lays down a spiral toolpath. So you can see a nice smooth spiraling toolpath. Again, I give it a center, a minimum, and a maximum radius, and it projects that spiral toolpath on the solid. I did not choose these individual toolpaths or these individual surfaces. I basically just said lay down a spiraling toolpath with this center, maximum radius in this area, and I'm actually using a constraint boundary to limit the travel to just around that boss. As you can see there. So already we can see that not all the technologies from HSM can be applied to the entire part. Most of the time, they fit specific features. So that's when you need to use constraint boundaries to limit the travel. If I had tried to do that, that radial toolpath on the entire part, it might not leave the best finish as it spirals or spokes out from that center area. And likewise with the spiral, I don't want it to be jumping up and down along each of these features. So uh, already we can see that each technology is best for a particular feature. And we'll continue with that to, uh, as a trend here. You can see under morphed machining, similar to what we saw in, in video 12, I basically chose a start and end curve. So we'll just open that up. So drive boundary, I have my first curve as that line there. I have as my second curve, the line over there that has a little bit of that, that kink over there. And if we look at the toolpath, I've told it to blend the toolpath as it goes across that surface from one side as it goes across, it, you can see that it begins to develop that kink. The constraint boundary limits the travel of the tool to just this surface. So I just chose the outside edges of that surface. So even though I'm telling it to morph between those two, it really is only applying it on that one surface. So again, a major difference between HSM and HSS is that I choose the solid as my geometry and I have to use constraint boundaries to limit the travel to that one particular surface. Offset cutting is similar to what we saw in video 12 as parallel to curve. Again, I, what I've done here is I've chosen a curve. So in my drive boundary, I have a single curve, just that edge that you see there. And I told it from that edge, I have that much material to machine. So about 0.45 away from that line. And I'm gonna step along that in 10 thou increments. My constraint boundary, I'm doing it for the entire part, but because here I've told it just a clear offset, I really only have to travel that distance. So across the part, whatever it finds of the solid, offsetting by 450 thou, it's gonna machine all that. So again, another particular use of this toolpath. If I tried to do that for the entire part, um, it would almost be a waste. I could do another toolpath and get a better finish, and it would be easier to program. In this case, this is really just more for, in this particular part, it has kind of a nice smooth feature going on from that, that one line, about 450. So that's why I was able to use it there. And I can limit the travel even further with a constraint boundary. Boundary machining, you project a curve onto the, to the solid and you can, uh, you can use this for engraving, you can use this for uh, a logo or, or anything like that. In this case, I just have the, the outside edge of the part projected. And the outside edge, if we take a look at it, is being used for both the drive surface, the drive boundary, and the constraint boundary. So I can project any toolpath I want onto the part, and uh, it is really is just uh, uh, for a type of engraving. It's a projection of a sketch onto the solid. Rather than doing it inside SolidWorks, we can do it using the toolpath. Rest machining, similar to what we saw in video 13, um, I basically ch uh, chose a smaller diameter tool and I told it to analyze the part to see where the previous tool could not have machined. So in this case, it's just these areas here and that sharp corner there. So similar to, again, to what you've seen in the rest of the videos, anytime the terminology rest is used, it is really just a step down of the tool to machine a particular area. 3D constant step over is a, 
a multi-directional toolpath. Essentially, I've told it to do the entire part. It finds a center of the part, and it just does a constant step over from there. If we take a look at the passive section, I have a horizontal step and a vertical step. This is the toolpath, the technology, that I usually recommend if you're not sure which one of the other ones to use. Because it goes in all different directions, it usually gives you a nice finish in the areas you're looking for. But because it's so large, uh, it is a, uh, a multi-line code file, uh, so it's probably too large. This is one that if you're not sure what to use, definitely you would use a constraint boundary like I've done here. Again, I've just drawn a circle as my constraint boundary, and I've told it to offset from there. You can see how that toolpath comes out. Parallel pencil milling and pencil milling are to do the tight areas. This is kind of um, uh, a follow-up to whatever other technology you use. You can use a very small tool and then just go and do all these separate tight corners. This is an example of parallel pencil milling well, where I've told it not just to do a one pass in each corner, but to feather out from there with a, a few extra lines, a few extra step overs on each edge. And the way we program that, either parallel min pencil milling or just pencil milling itself, is Again, we just give it a constraint boundary. I'm doing the entire part. The pencil passes. It's looking for a bitangency angle made by the tool with whatever corner. So you set that to whatever angle you want. And that is, again, just a measure of how tight that corner is. Could that tool get any deeper in there? Uh, and it just looks at the, the surface normals made by the tool. And then again, passes, we have a horizontal step over and a vertical step over. Three D corner offset is a different type of offset, similar to the three D corner offset. Um, is more of um, um, again, it has different initiator sites, but it does the same thing. It's basically just choosing a, um, the edges and just offsetting from there. Again, this is another one you can use if you're not sure which one to use, and they have a horizontal step over and a vertical step over. So again, we can see that in the group of technologies, there's either very specific ones or just very wide-ranging ones. In this case, this one, you could just uh, limit the travel of the tool using a constraint boundary. And again, you can get uh, a nice finish if you're looking for it. So as a target recognition toolpath, this is one that is uh, useful for finishing complex parts that have tiny little surfaces that you don't want to individually choose. You can limit the travel of the tool using the constraint boundary, and you can get good finishes in very specific areas using sketches and such. Any questions on this or anything else from SolidCAM, you can always call us at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. You can send us your parts or your, or your questions via the ticket system at SolidCAMSupport.com. And stay tuned for the rest of the videos on the YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.